Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is so exciting. We're so happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Whitney. No problem. We appreciate the, this um, whole thing. So I know it's been a long journey from earlier this week and then the storms, everything to just get you guys down to Memphis. Um, I'm sure you're all exhausted, so thank you for coming down here. I wanted to, I guess, first ask you guys kind of how did you all get started, especially as a couple. I know there's individual stories and then there's probably a, how y'all work together, but just on the individual sense, how did you get started doing what you do? Cool. Wow, okay, it's a lot. Um, I think we should just do a full, like, how we met, who we are. Oh, tell the whole thing, yeah. Like, so, so at least there's like, some context yeah. for why we're sitting up here. Uh, I'm a photographer. B's a photographer. She's yeah. from uh, Kenya. I was born in Jamaica. Um, yeah, that's our background. I was shooting for a while. We love telling the story. <laughs> and how'd you come, how'd we, how'd we meet? Oh, so we met at, um, basically, it was an event at the Apple Store in Soho. It was kind of like what you're talking about with the internet and whatnot. I was just on Tumblr and I'd seen this sort of community of artists making all types of different things. And um, I was separate from it. I wasn't creating any art and I also wasn't living in New York or anything like that. And I just thought everything was so interesting. And one day an event popped up and I'm like, I'm going to that. I'm gonna go to that. I'm gonna really enjoy myself and just like experience this life. And that's where we met. Yeah, so it was, it was, yeah. was kind of like this. Uh, a yeah. group of our friends, we put together an, an editorial, and uh, we were showing it. Um, and what was your name again? Kathy. Kathy. Like, she yeah. talked about, like, just doing it, all right? Yeah. So we were, like, big on that. We just kind of, like, put out things, not waiting for, any, for anyone else to tell us what to do. We put out editorials. And um, I had just gone through this breakup, so I thought the best way to deal with it was to make some work. Right? So I put out a, it was called a love story. And it was a story of like a breakup through photos. And it was just getting progressively bad. And it was just heartache. It was just <laughs> all this. I put all of that into it. Um, and you released it on Valentine's Day. And I released it on Valentine's Day because <laughs> that's how I was feeling at the time. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I saw it. And it was something I'd never seen before. I mean, I would casually like a hobby take photographs ever since I was a kid. Um, but I'd never seen a narrative told through still photographs. And I remember clicking through because it was, Raj had built a website to house the whole thing and there was music. And I remember clicking through and seeing this couple and they were together. And then all of a sudden they were kind of like moving apart. And I can still remember that feeling of like, oh my gosh, they're breaking up. <laughs> like I'm still watching it and having this emotional experience. And um, when I saw him at the event, I thought, uh, I have to say, that was so amazing, that was so cool. Thanks, Whitney. Hi, Hi Derek. Hey. Good to see you. Switch I know. room. I, 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 I think I'm Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. I got a weird mic, I got a weird mic situation. How's it going? Good, 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 good. We're telling our story. You were mid-sentence, I think, as well, so go yeah. ahead. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I just told Raj, like, hey, I saw your work, that was really amazing. I'd never seen anything like that before, and thank you. That's it. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> there was nothing more to it, really. And being the awkward creative that I was at the time, I said nothing, and <laughs> like just it's the it best was just, response, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was so it was it was so awkward. It was so weird. It's not my best my best moment. Um, oh, but it's so cool because you had just said that like art is communication, and at that time, Raj was making all of this work that. Um, he used to talk about speaking a lot. Yeah. They were all, he'd make photographs with like uh, tape over people's mouths, but the oh, tape wow. would have written on it, speak. Yeah. And the whole thing was communicating through stills. And that language reached me and created a relationship between us. And now we're like still doing that, basically. Yeah. So that was the foundation for, yeah. for us as ours. So, so cool. it went from, I guess, me doing that to us doing that together. And we're still doing that. So that's our background. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's your background as a couple. That's our background. As a couple, a couple. and as creatives. Yeah. As, as creatives. creatives. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. I'm yeah. excited to talk with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You we guys are fun. Yeah, we got to chat briefly. We got on to the chat phone. briefly, and I was so. I, mean, I, got, I left a phone call like I was jumping off the walls. Like, who did you just talk to? <laughs> I was clearly not a funder, too, right? Because yeah, you're totally. like on the same page, so I'm so excited. <laughs> so I would love to just. I mean, it's always great to kind of hear people's path to photography or their, their path to their passion, because yeah. those paths can be so different. Yeah. So I would just love to hear kind of what's been your path, what brought you to it, and what keeps you in it. Oh, yeah. 
Do you want to go first? No, you got to go first. Okay. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I've been kind of like a hobbyist. I really still consider myself a hobbyist, but um, my father bought me a camera when I was really small, like a little point-and-shoot Olympus, and he would give me lessons like don't shoot into the sun or you know think about composition and framing. Uh, but basically, he would just leave me to play with it, and I loved, I loved the camera just as a tool. Um, I still remember one thing that you know, helped me fall in love with it and kind of keeps me in it was when I was about, I think, eight years old. We lived in Toronto and we took a ferry to these little islands. And on the way back, the sun was setting and the sky was like turning this pinkish purple color. And I just, as a kid, since I was a kid, purple is my favorite color. And mm. so it was a really, really innocent impulse. I was just like, the sky is purple. I have a camera. Took a picture <laughs> of it, and that was it. Yeah. And that was the time when you'd have to like send your photos out, and you get them back. And you know, I got them back, and I saw the print of the sky purple. And I was just in love with the whole idea that that moment that I experienced in love that I could still have, and it was right there in front of me again. Um, and that's really what uh, got me falling in love with photography from the beginning um, and keeps me in it because now we're photographing all types of things. First it was us, we were photographing our thing mm. and now it's expanded to be more about the people we meet and the things that they do and their life stories and having those photographs is just kind of a beautiful experience for us. And you were like 13, right? Yeah, I was like 12, 12, 12 oh, wow. when I took that photo, yeah. Okay. So I don't have like that deep of a background. Yeah. I, I re- <laughs> You're not gonna make one up, right, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> I really don't even have a background in photography. I have, I have like a current yeah. life in photography now, and it, maybe this would be my background at some point. Um, because prior to this, I was just like I was delivering pizza, and then I was like working for UPS, mm-hmm. and I kind a friend of mine was taking photos, and I saw the photos, and I was like, that's these photos are really crisp and clear and great. Um, and I just picked it up. It was something better to do than mm. delivering pizza, and you know, it just worked out. And in your early starts, you felt like you got rewarded in a way. You felt like your perspective was unique in a way that kept you going. No, no. I, it was just something better to do. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I was just, I was like, That's this, is, this is really, really great. So, um, and because of that, I guess what really helped us, us meaning like our, uh, my group of friends who started doing this, is that there wasn't much intention. Mm. So we were able to just like freely communicate and freely like be ourselves within the work. Yeah. We weren't trying to think about getting some sort of job somewhere or getting into some sort of program. We just wanted to tell our stories and that was the only way we had at the time was yeah. through photos and through blogging and doing those kinds of things. Mm. So it was very authentic and it was aggressive because you know, what else is there to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's you gave me the perfect setup for the next question. Oh, really? Cool. Uh, and we talk, I mean, and looking at your work, you talk a lot about this idea of storytelling mm. Mm. through photographs. And I was, I mean, you do a great job of it. Right? Your photographs you. are beautiful, and the stories are very obvious in some ways, or at least like a parable perspective. Everybody can take their story away from it. Mm. Right? Oh, thank you. Um, but I was totally um, laughing a few weeks ago or months ago when everyone became an art critic when the, the mm. presidential uh, paintings were done. Oh, yeah. Um, and there was a, the, the picture of uh, Michelle Obama. And I was looking at Facebook is great in that way. You have the conversations that are happening around things. You see how people are thinking. And someone was justifying the painting. It's like, you guys have to realize it's a painting. It's not a photograph, right? It doesn't have to be exact and perfect. And then someone got on and was like, well, hello, photographs aren't photographs anymore, right? They don't have to be exact and perfect either, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think it's interesting to think about how photographs can be used to tell a story. And I'd love to and hear you guys talk about how you use your photographs to tell a story and what stories you guys look to, to tell. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. The stories that we love to tell. Well, it's changed over the years. Um, like I said, we, were, we started taking our own, telling our own stories, just, you know, who we were hanging out with, where we were going. Um, and at some point, the audience grew, and I think we grew alongside them and started asking deeper questions, like, okay, we don't want to just have the lens on ourselves anymore. Um, when we know so many amazing people, and there are so many amazing people that we don't know. Um, so we've really turned the lens, I think, in a lot of different ways since the beginning, which you could talk about more specifically. I, I think the, the first story, and it's still, it's still going on now, like I wanted to tell the story of an alternative black experience. Mm. That's like my biggest thing. So I was born in Jamaica, 
grew up in a in a Caribbean community, right? So when I started doing like weird things like wearing red pants and wanting to be a professional photographer, it was just like that's not an option, right? Mm-hmm. So um, and I, I met a lot of people like this. So mm-hmm. we like, had a community, and it was just like this. We're like kind of telling our story. This is a new experience. Like we're still very much black. We're still very much like Caribbean, Ghanaian, all these things. Mm-hmm. But we like to dress like this, and we like to do these different things. So mm-hmm. um, we wanted. I wanted to tell that story of like our interests, our world, um, and this this mixture of like America and being an immigrant mm. and like you know the music and the style and that that that's the primary story, right? And that's the original mm-hmm. story and that will be the story forever because that's my story. Mm-hmm. Um, now like I'm just interested in just the story of humanity. Like mm-hmm. we've been doing like these series um, whether we on, on black Muslims or like we just did women a series, like um, really diving into identity and what that really means, right? Mm-hmm. So that's like the, what's within our work right now. Yeah. yeah. No, I, this is uh, the idea of the norm, the, using the storytelling to normalize mm-hmm. certain aspects. I think it's, it's interesting how you talk about this. You want to project an image mm-hmm. that's fairly normal to you. And I grew up growing up in New Orleans. I grew up in a black city, in a black neighborhood, and everybody to me was black, mm-hmm. right? And I remember very keenly. My grandmother was sitting me down before I went off to my new white elementary school explaining I was going to meet people that look different, mm-hmm. right? And I didn't, you know, everybody was black to me. I saw white people on TV, but you know, you know there, are, there are a lot of things on TV, right? Yeah. I mean, you had all kinds of stuff on TV. And I remember going off to this elementary school, and the first month or so I was there, my grandmother kept asking about these new people I was meeting, right? And I didn't know what she was talking about. And funny enough, my mom was like, um, yeah, about two weeks, and you kept re- talking about everyone being from Gentilly. And Gentile is a neighborhood in New Orleans. Yeah. And, uh, and literally, I had a light-skinned aunt who was from Gentilly. And so I just assumed that all the white people were black people from Gentilly, right? So I just kept talking about it. My teacher's from Gentilly, and my friend Adam Hirsch is from Gentilly. And my mom's like, who's this Gentilly? He's like, oh my god, we've raised the blackest child ever, right? And so, but, but I mean, there's a power in being able to create that story and normalize. Yeah. Um, the experience, and also mm-hmm. in doing so, and I'd love you to talk a little bit more about the, kind of the community you created in doing the work. We're not so much created, but kind of fallen into. Fallen into yeah. It. yeah, oh, it's a great community of people. It's been really amazing. Um, I also came from a really conventional kind of upbringing, even though uh, my parents are immigrants and I was born abroad. Our, we were raised to kind of you know get a good job, kind of doctor, lawyer, engineer kind yeah. of situation, and um, just meeting this whole crew of people in the city who have grown into like, or, I mean, everyone's grown into such amazing creatives in their own rights, but seeing people being brave and just doing new things, different things, you know, and being like unapologetically themselves was a great experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I was reading this note uh, I wrote while yeah. the other people were speaking about how important collaboration has been to us. Collaboration has been yeah. everything. Everything. Wow. Like it's not, like, I know we, like, love the image of, like, this lone superstar artist, but, like, collaboration is, has been the thing that has moved us forward. Like, from, like, our biggest uh, gigs to, like, the things we put out, like, mm-hmm. or the, the best work, it's always been in collaboration. So the community, like, for us is, like, key, is key. Yeah. And in a way, it really, like, keeps us afloat in the city. I think a lot of the classic artist issues we don't really deal with because there's just so many people to pick up the corners, you know, there's there's someone who has a space, there's someone who does video, there's someone who knows how to code and take pictures and, and you know, just being connected and really having authentic conversations with those people and like becoming friends, you know, it's, it really helps. Yeah. That was awesome. I, 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 you can't talk about community in 2018 without talking about the kind of social media. Yeah. and the virtual community that exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. there's just so much talk about kind of the de- democratization of art and, and the gatekeepers have changed. And how has social media impacted kind of your work and how you think about producing it and creating it and developing it? Huge. Mm. Social media is huge. I mean, go ahead. What do you think, Raj? Raj is the social media whiz here. I he, know, right? He That's like, I'm looking, we're both really looking over at him like, uh, <laughs> come on, Raj. Yeah, come on. What's this one's for say? you. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I don't know. It's weird to just if I think about how it's changed, like so. The, let's get, we should continue that story we told, right? So <laughs> we um, we met and uh, I didn't say anything and I, so I just so I so I was like that was pretty whack. I decided to go back and see if I could find her again, right? And uh, she wasn't there, but I remembered her Tumblr, 
Mm. Yeah, these were Tumblr days. It was Tumblr days, right? So I kind of sent her a message and invited her to this going away party I was having because I was moving to London. I was done with New York, moving on, right? Um, so I invited her out, and she said... I said no. <laughs> so um, that was terrible, right? And, 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 and you said nothing. Yeah, and I was like, okay, off to London, right? Um, so went to London, didn't like it, came back, and uh, I said, you know what, let me decide to reach out again, and I invited her to see Bill Cunningham, the documentary. Um, and then. She said. Which I said yes to, yeah. Because of Bill, not because of Because you. of Bill. We all <laughs> said yes to Bill. <laughs> She's like, yeah, definitely. Um, so like for me, like the seeing spirit the experience of really engaging uh, a wider community. I grew up in Mount Vernon, New York, um, which is maybe big for some people, but small yeah, okay, cool, small. All right. Um, I grew up there <laughs> and uh, to be really engage a large community, like the people who like we were just in Barcelona a few weeks ago and then like LA and all these places, like to be able to connect, connect with work, tell stories mm. across the board, it's, it's, it's necessary. Yeah. And you it's talk the about- the best platform for the, best. the work. It is? It's not, it's the Say worst. Say more. Right? Like, so for me, like, so B talked about, she saw the work on this micro site that I made, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For me, like, I always think about my work with intention. Like, Instagram is great, but they, didn't, they're not consulting with me on like the best way to present my work. Right? Mm. Like I know what my how I want the work to be seen, so I need to craft the experience and the atmosphere around that. So that's why with Paper Monday we said, okay, well, how can we build like the world around the work, right? Rather than just like doing the lazy work and just popping it on here, how can we build something? How can we build an experience? How can we live engage? How can we do uh, direct connect with an audience, right? So. You know, social media is great from, that, from connecting with people, but as far as like presenting the work, not so much. Yeah, well, it sounds like in some ways it, it makes it harder for you to build your brand, right? Because people have so much control over it that you don't. How do you get around that? I, I don't really understand that question. In some ways, it's like, you know, when you are able to own the way things are presented, you kind of are able to control the way your art is seen and appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with social media, you don't have that ownership in some ways because people are putting it out there however they like. Yeah. Um, how do you get around that? Or if at all, you just accept it, maybe? Well, it's kind of like a two-pronged thing. One is building our own platform. That's a really big part of it, um, yeah. so that we can present in the way that we'd like. And um, the other side of it is using sh social media for what it's good for. You mm -hmm. know, And it is good for a lot of things, connecting with people. It, it is a way to present some work in some ways. Mm -hmm. So um, we just do the best we can to put out what we know is going to work. We don't, we don't just ignore it, and yeah. we also don't just throw anything on there. That's such an interesting question. Right, so you said building your brand. Like, I get that so often, and I'm like, that is, I don't even see it like that. Right? Mm -hmm. like, I'm, like, for me, it's, it's all telling a story. Right? And what is the best way to tell this story? Right? Like, it's, not, it's not brand building. I'm not good at that. I was, we were having a conversation the other day, I think I did, made a book with like Blurb or something like that, and I was like, man, they're really good at customer service. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I couldn't do that, all right? So like for me, it's just, I'm, tr I'm not trying to build a brand or like, you know, make a, I'm just really trying to tell a story. Like I see the story and I want the, to figure out how can I say something here? How can I like not bottle up the way I feel about, if, if it's a police shooting, if it's like, like just our relationship, it all has to come out. All right, so that's what I'm looking to do is to tell a story. Um, and whether it be through social media or like PD, making PDFs, like I'm just kind of doing a service to myself by like speaking mm -hmm. out all the things that I have within me. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's helpful. And I think maybe brand is a bad word there. My NDA is coming out, sorry about <laughs> that. But I think all the time I have a really good friend who does interior design in, in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And she'll do a house and she'll go to show the house. And, um, and before she's gone in, someone else has gone in and changed things. And she'll walk to the house. She's like, this place doesn't feel right. This isn't my feel, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. And so she wants people to feel a certain way. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think of that as being her brand, like the yeah. feeling that comes with her work. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot harder to kind of control when other people are in your space. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about being in Spain just earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, travel can be amazing for a lot of different things. The same with living in different places or coming from different places. How has that influenced your work and kind of shaped your your storytelling and the perspective you want to put out there, the different places you visited or lived? This is definitely your question. This is my question? That's this is your question. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, B's been everywhere. Right? 
I, I have been blessed by um, being raised by parents who just were like always kind of moving around. So we lived in a lot of different places while I was growing up. Um, I think it's really informed the, my perspective on the world just in the sense that I've uh, been able to see a lot of different things and um, helps put things in context, mm -hmm. you know. Um, for instance, like political climates, economic climates and the places that we go in America and all those things. Um, just provide some other context to be able to say, well, there's a black experience in Italy and there's a black experience in Jamaica and there's, um, you know, it varies a lot and we have so much to learn from each other. There's so many different stories to tell um, and there are people who've dealt with the same things that we're dealing with um, in their own ways. So in that sense, that's it's informed my work like in a conceptual way, mm -hmm. but also just more Specifically, like I personally photograph better when I'm in a place that's new for me. So travel is really important. I just I love being able to see a place for the first time or to be able to capture things that um, uh, and my eye feels like more alive or yeah. something in a place that I haven't seen before. Yeah. And how's New York shaped your work? Oh my gosh, New York has changed everything about the way I photograph <laughs> because of the community, but more so the people yeah. than, than the actual like uh, landscape of the city. You know, I mean, I still, I love the city. I feel like alive by just like being there and being on the street and being around so many creative people. Um, but the community has just really changed my perspective. I was, before I met Raj, I was on a PhD track to go, I was going to go to Michigan and get a PhD in higher education. And um, it would probably would have been a great life, <laughs> but... <laughs> But or, to be or honest, not. or not, yeah, because yeah. to be honest, it was a seven-year program, and one of the things Raj said to me early on in our relationship, he was like, why are you doing that? Like, why do you want to do that? I had an apartment and everything, and I was like, I just want to write, I want to read, I want to write, I want to research, and uh, I, want to, I want to tell people things. And he was like, well, if you have something to say, like, why wouldn't you just say it? And for me, it was such a simple <laughs> question, but it, like, kind of threw my whole worldview upside down, because I was like... What do you mean just say it you know what are you like, talking about yeah. he was like well <laughs> there's the internet there's tumblr there's facebook there's whatever like why don't you just write down what you have to say and put it out there and i was like no that's not how it works you have to go get a degree you have to like be an expert in your field you have to have read what other people have said about the thing and then you have to read da -da, and other people have to you know you have to defend your thesis you have to and he was like that doesn't make any sense and when i think about that now i would <laughs> just be finishing that program like right now you know, when I think about the last seven years of what we've been able to experience and learn, and honestly, we've become, to me, this sort of like social anthropologist mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's just, it's fascinating to think that I, I would have put all of that on hold because of an a outdated perspective, I would say. I, I just, everything you said is so true. The community has changed, every, has affected everything. It's the, it's the thing that keeps everything beating, so, yeah. Yeah. And what do you love most about each other's work and how do you influence each other? Oh, let me go first. <laughs> uh, I just really love, like even from, from the very beginning, just like the story I just told you, like I just really enjoy seeing Raj just navigate the world as a creative mind and visionary because he's just very straightforward. Like there's no boundaries, there's no gatekeeper, there's no hoop, there's no thing to jump over. He's mm. just like, oh, I want to tell a story about women, and so let's do it. Like, who are the women that you know, that we know? Let's get them in the loft, in our studio, and let's take their pictures and ask some questions. And like, we'll figure out the whole rest of it later. Um, and yeah, that's just so inspiring to me as just having a conventional mindset. It's so inspiring to me to kind of like break down all the barriers between whatever I'm feeling inside and like putting it out there. Most inspiring. It's, since we have this conflict, because <laughs> I like to defer, right? And yeah. B like, likes to be the one to like take the shot, right? So we have like this little thing, right? Um, and we were talking the other day, and what would you say to me? She said, uh, are my ideas bad? <laughs> right? <laughs> She's like, do I have bad ideas? And I, was, I was like, I don't know what was happening. She was just having a moment. We right? have a brainstorming those, session. Those moments happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A okay. lot, We're actually. having a brainstorming <laughs> session. And we've, ha we've had them, obviously, for like since we've met. We have them. But I, before, I used to get like my ego in things. And I'd be like, I have this idea. And then I'd be like, how come it's not being received well? And then finally, something broke in me. And I was like, are they just bad ideas? Is that why they're not received well? <laughs> like, what's going on? Oh, man. But like the thing with B is that like she 
is she just makes things better. Like she takes, like whether it be an idea, I have an idea, someone else has, and she really builds and develops it. And I, I feel like, you know, I can see the elevation in the work that we've done and the work that I've done, like once we started doing it together. So that's like just amazing. And as a photographer, I just, I just think she photographs better than I do, right? mm. to be honest. Um, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She makes things better has got to be the best compliment anyone can offer. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Poop. Cool. What advice do you have for young photographers and folks starting out their careers or pushing ahead in their careers? Keep photographing. But Ra that, mine is very encouraging. I'm just like, take pictures. Raj. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tough now. I have, like, I have so many like, young photographer friends, right? Um, and I think a lot of them are like trying to figure out like how can they like get get the brand work or how can they like you know just they're trying to like get to an end right I think mm -hmm. they need to like eliminate the end and like live in the now right so like what's the story now like what can you tell now and uh, collaboration is key um, but I can get more specific if the question gets more specific but like as a, from abroad just like eliminate the end like in the goal and just do the work mm -hmm. right and collaborate mm -hmm. so that's my big advice. And from a different angle, and I'll leave some space for folks if they have specific questions as well at the end, but yeah. uh, from a different angle, what, would you, what advice would you give folks who, well, I'll give a specific example oh. of folks who collect art. Uh, photography can be a little difficult to figure out how to incorporate it into your collection. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't come naturally for some. You appreciate it, but in some ways it's so omnipresent mm -hmm. that you don't think of it as being something that you actually buy for your home in the same way. What advice do you give to people who are thinking about collecting photography for their own collections? Advice? Um, I don't have advice. I was just going to talk about Howard Greenberg. Oh, Howard Greenberg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say I don't have advice because I, I really don't know very much about the like, collecting mm. world, the art, and I would say the art world. Like, one of the best things about New York is like you can fall into things and you don't even realize you're there. Mm. Um, I had a friend who invited me to um, Jack Shaman's gallery. Mm -hmm. It was like a little artist talk. Or I thought it was a little artist talk and then it ended up being like James Carey Marshall. Oh, wow. And he was like, I like had a camera with me. I think I had like a really junky camera at that point. I was just like in there. And um, I was like, cool. And he made like huge coins. I don't know, you probably maybe know the actual exhibit, but it was like really dope, but really interesting. And uh, he was like, what do you do? And I was like, well, I'm a photographer. And then quickly I was like, but I'm not like in the art world or anything, you know? And he was like, what do you mean you're not in the art world? I was like, I'm just not, you know, I don't do like what you guys do. <laughs> he was like, he said something about, um, uh, I don't want to butcher it because I'm really not in the art world, but he said, if you, he said you, something. He said you're in the art world. Yeah, yeah he was like, don't world. you know anything about Own Duchamp? Yeah. Like there was no inside or outside the art world. And I was like, Okay, but anyway, just to say that like, you know, you can kind of fall into things without knowing you're in them. So, I mean, I really don't think I'm in the art world, but then I had really in that the art situation world. Yeah. happen to me. I was like, oh, hey, you're famous, I guess, to people, besides the point. But so I don't know really much about collecting. Um, we also had a friend who was like, oh, photography's so hard. Like, it has to be really big or really colorful or very abstract, and those are the things that people buy. And I remember trying to, kind of like Roger saying, I had an end where I wanted to be there. So I was trying to like make my work to be something that people would buy. But that's, that's so paralyzing. It really kills the work. So I try not to think about it. I don't really have any knowledge. I think, I think it's important to like see the art within it, but outside of like the traditional art perspective. Right? So like we were just watching the Steven Spielberg documentary on HBO, mm. and he talks about like this issue that he has where it's like because he makes major box office films, like a lot of people are like it shouldn't be like considered true art, right? Mm. Um, and I guess for me, I've kind of had that same thing, like where I mean I don't know I don't know what people consider the work, but we do a lot of brand work, we do a lot of commercial stuff, we work with like celebrities and people like that, so I don't know like how the work is viewed. All right, and I, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care, All right? But I think for the people with in the art world, there for us, like I know within our community, it's like the walls are there, All right? So like I mean, if you see the art within it, I mean I think the walls need to come down, and uh, the art needs to be seen within the work that other people are doing. Cool. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of it's about taking chances. Like, I mean, we um, we've been to Howard Greenberg Gallery like a bunch of times, which we love. He's got. I guess in the art world is considered one of the best collections of photography, contemporary photography. Mm -hmm. um, and he just started by buying prints that he liked. Nobody cared about it, you know? And so I, I think maybe that's the advice. Like, don't be so concerned about what sells or what people care about, because nobody cared about the things he was buying. And um, now his collection is just amazing and beautiful. And it's amazing. Yeah, it, so maybe, maybe that's it. Thank you. Thank and you. it's an honor for us to have you here as well. So thank you very thank much. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and be assured me when we were on the phone, she said, and we can hang out afterwards. We're cool with that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's going to hang out. They're going to hang out afterwards and take questions. Thanks again, guys. Yeah, Thanks we'll be so around. Much. Thank you, Darren. Of course. Appreciate it.